This is a patient referred in after cataract surgery. He is highly hyperopic with a very small eye, and at the end of the procedure, there is a dehiscence of the capsular bag with vitreous prolapse to the wound. Uh, a decision has been made to uh, do a pars plane of vitrectomy and repositioning of the lens and recentering of the capsular bag. Here, a pars plane infusion line and trocar for vitrectomy have been placed three millimeters posteriorly to the limbus, as this is a small eye. Uh, dilute tree essence is now injected into the eye to stain the vitreous adherent to the wound uh, going around through the large zonular dehiscence. A pars plane of vitrectomy is now going to be carried out to amputate the vitreous that is adherent to the wound from a posterior approach. Uh, during this uh, vitrectomy, though, I have to be very careful as the capsular bag uh, is very close to the tip of the vitrector, and because it is very loose, it will be very easy for this uh, to fly into the vitrectomy tip and to be inadvertently cut. So at this point, I'm going to inject viscoelastic into the anterior chamber to deepen it and push the lens uh, capsular bag complex back a bit. Um, I'll now uh, attempt to reinflate the capsular bag and inject dispersive viscoelastic into the bag to give it some uh, more stability uh, and to uh, better center the lens a bit. Um, once this is done, um, I'm going to go into a paracentesis in the cornea and amputate the uh, vitreous uh, that is still adherent to the wound and attempt to uh, remove this. I don't want to use too much uh, suction in the anterior chamber here, though, as the lens uh, capsular bag complex will come forward, given that there is posterior infusion. So here I'm going to add more dispersive viscoelastic into the anterior chamber to push the lens capsule bag complex back. Uh, now I'm going to rotate the lens just a little bit and push it over uh, into a more centered position. Uh, further parts plane of vitrectomy can now be carried out and I'll be able to pull this amputated um, strand uh, of vitreous back around through the zonular dehiscence uh, and the capsular bag at this point is a bit more stable because it is filled with dispersive viscoelastic. At this point a CTR is going to be injected into the capsular bag using a spiraling technique. Uh, this is a very gentle technique, and if there's an inadvertent small hole in the peripheral capsular bag, it will prevent the CTR from poking through it. It will also prevent the CTR from pushing the uh, haptic of the lens uh, inadvertently. Once the CTR is dropped into the capsular bag, there is much greater stability to the capsular bag. Uh, there are good zonules here that are going to support the whole capsular bag complex, and the CTR helps distribute these forces more evenly. I'm testing the uh, stability of the lens. At this point, it feels quite good, and I'm sweeping the wound to make sure there are no vitreous strands that I can't see. Um, at this point, I'm going to use an anterior chamber infusion uh, through a cannula uh, so that I can do um, removal of the cortex using the vitrector with the cutter turned off this is very important so I didn't, don't inadvertently cut the capsular bag. So the uh, vitrector is turned off and I'm using the um, vitrectomy tip as an aspiration cannula and I'm going to uh, remove the uh, residual cortex that is still within the capsular bag. Um, this is easily done. Uh, and again, the anterior infusion prevents uh, the lens capsular bag from coming forward as I do this. Um, I'll now rotate the lens a little bit uh, using this coat on a cannula, uh, push the lens back, and at this point I can see that the capsular excess is uh, decentered, uh, and so I'm going to want to uh, re tear this rexus. A paracentesis is made, and a 23 gauge micro scissor is used to cut the anterior capsule. And once this little nip is created, I'm going to uh, re-tear the rexus here to make it uh, a little bit more round um, and uh, out of the way. Uh, a micro rexus forceps is passed through a paracentesis, and I'll use my left hand to initiate the tear. Uh, the zonules here are very poor, so there's not much to tear against, 
So I'm tearing very slowly and very carefully and trying to control the vector forces so the tear doesn't go out. I'll now switch hands and complete the tear with the right hand uh, from a slightly better angle to do so. Uh, and again, the zonules are quite poor, so I'm taking it very easy here. And once this is done, um, I now have a um, rexus that I feel uh, is more appropriate in size and shape. I'll now rotate the lens so that the uh, haptic is in the position of the zonular weakness, giving uh, some structural support here uh, in this area, uh, preventing the capsule bag from collapsing in this area more over time. Uh, even though the CTR is here, uh, that will uh, prevent this to some degree. I feel this is a better orientation for this implant. Uh, once this is completed, uh, I can remove the anterior chamber infusion line, uh, pull out the trocars, uh, and the case uh, is completed. Uh, you can see as I pull these out that the lens capsular bag complex is well centered and very stable. Slit lamp photos are taken the next day. Uh, the patient uh, was very uh, pleased with the uh, visual outcome on day one, uh, seeing 2040 uncorrected. These are the slit lamp images taken on day one. You can see that the cornea is quite clear. The implant is well centered and very stable.